stand to our feet together? So good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. For this very first song we're going to sing, we're just going to sing about our king and that no other king would do what our king has done and is still doing in this place today. Why don't you just lift up your hands. Come on, welcome the spirit of the Lord in this place and give him honor as king of kings and as Lord of lords. Father, we love you, Lord. You're so good to your people. You're so kind. You've been through so much, Lord God, that no other king would have went through. But because of your love, because of your kindness, because of your greatness, oh God, Lord, we bless you in this place. We bless you in this place. We bless you in this place. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord and give him honor and glory. Let's do his name, the King of kings and the Lord of lords.
respond to your Father. To lift up your hands. Oceans are rising, even the earth. rising and falling. Response to your love, into your word. Oh, oh, oh. And we are responding to your love, my God. How great you are! How great, how great you are!
with your hands in the air, just give them a wave offering. Come on, this is biblical right here. You're still moving in this place. Your power's still strong in this house. We worship you in spirit and in truth today, Father. For you seek such to worship you in that manner tonight. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel revival spirit in this place today. Come on, if you feel that, clap your hands up to the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated and worship with the sanctuary choir. As I pray in Jesus' name, my vision starts to change over my family, my country. City. Come on, sing about this. Jericho walls start crashing down. I hear revival sound over my family, my country, my, my city. Come on, church, sing this with us. I see my city resurrected. I see my city filled with blessing. With eyes full of faith. full of faith just lift up hands high to heaven right here come on throw your head back and just love him and say lord my family needs you come on tell him my city needs you my country needs you oh god lord we want to see revival lord let the spirit lord god be revived oh god hey lord what once lord god was living for you lord god bring it home again bring the prodigal home oh god Your 
worship today, I can see it. I know it's there. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Do it again, say shout hallelujah. Whatever come what may, hallelujah anyhow. Because if God's done it before, he can do it again. If he's brought me out before, he can bring me out again. Huh. Hey, woo, put a jersey like this. Oh, hey. You're gonna recognize these songs. Hey, come on, he's more than enough. Hey. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs.
good times and the bad times. If you slays me, yeah, will I worship? Yeah, will I serve? Yeah, will I pray? Oh, in the desert place, on the mountain top, in the valley low, I worship, I praise. Fear evil. Wait a minute, one more time. I think I'll say it again. Yeah. I swear. I've been so good to me. He's my closest friend. Oh. I've come too far too to far. turn around now. Oh. I'm oh. going to stand out the way, watch out, and get out the No matter what comes my way, I'll make my voice and say, Hallelujah. today kind of did a little remix on it so I want to go to the wait a minute one more time but we ain't gonna use mics all right I want to hear what you all sound like ready one two three say wait a minute oh my word
worth them all. Oh, yes. Our God is worthy. Our God is not only more than enough, our God is worthy. Our God is worthy. He is not only more than enough, our God is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Do you know that with our God, there has never been any close calls? God has never almost won a game. God has never almost anything. Now, a lot of things man does, he almost won. But not with God. God has never almost anything. Now, God may have waited for the last second, but God didn't almost. Because our God is worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy, our God is worthy, 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 worthy. I don't care how old I get. You know, I'll, I'll let you go back to your seats at this time, but remain standing. I don't care how old I get. There's times that I am not the preacher for the service. And when the discussions are made, who's going to do the preliminaries? I always volunteer. There may come a day when I'm not preaching every service. But I don't tell you, Sister Sutton, prayer time is my favorite thing to do. Just let me do prayer. I said, just let me do prayer. If the day comes that I can't relate to a congregation, would you please just let me pray? Would you just let me take the needs of the people and take them before God? The team will tell you, we're discussing who's going to do this and that. My hand goes up first. I'll pray. Because I love to lead God's people in prayer. Prayer is the greatest privilege a child of God has. That Almighty God would give you and I the opportunity to come into His presence and communicate with Him. Can I tell you tonight, there are times I have no answers, but there's not a time I have no prayer. There's a time you have no rhyme or no reason what comes your way. But the greatest tragedies have never caused us to say, we don't even need to pray about that. Because when we don't have an answer, we've always got an altar. We've always got an altar. Brother Purdue, when we have no answers, on our way to Sevierville today, Brother Purdue sent me this text of the church that he had pastored in Newcastle. A family, am I saying their name correctly? The Kavanaugh family. The Kavanaugh family. A family that he pastored. I believe I want to get this correct. One is an elderly man who's been bringing his son to church. His name is Don. His son's name is Ray. Don was about 75 years old and Ray is about 50. And today, as they pulled out of the church parking lot, across the train tracks, right there by the church, they were hit by a train. Both of them were killed. Can I tell you, when you don't have an answer, Brother Purdue, praise God, we got prayer. We got prayer. Yeah. Oh, yes, sweet Jesus, come down. God, come down. You hear the prayers of your people right now. God, 
touch the Kavanaugh family. God, the inconsolable grief they must be going through right now. Oh, God, go to the Kavanaugh family there in Newcastle. Jesus, just walk into the room where they're at right now. And Lord, wrap your arms around this family, God. And God, begin to comfort them and begin to touch them tonight, God. And oh, God, move in that hospital room with Sister Mitchy. God, touch her, oh God, as she's had that cancerous tumor removed from her body. God, I'm asking and believing for total healing for Sister Mitchy. God, as she has lost so much weight, God, the outlook for her life looks bleak. But oh God, I bring you, Sister Mitchy, before your presence tonight. There's nothing you can't do, God. Lord, you healed the woman with the issue of blood. Oh God, you even brought Lazarus back from the dead. Oh God, every need. Come on, raise your hands in this place tonight if you have a need. Come on, pray about it right now. Lord, touch Sister Mitchy. Oh God, touch Sister Step tonight. Oh God, touch Sister Lois Orr tonight, God. Oh God, touch Nolan and Barbara Haver tonight, God. Lord, move, God, upon the sick and the afflicted in this service, God. Lord, move upon the downcast, God. Lord, move upon those whose backs are against the wall. Lord, by the mighty name of Jesus tonight, move. Lord, we'll give you praise and honor. God, we'll give you praise and honor tonight, Lord. Somebody say that name right now. Somebody say it again. Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Ushers, would you come? Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Brother Purdue, we will find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. Oh, He's passing by. Jesus is in this house. Jesus is in this house. tonight we thank you for health in our bodies God we thank you that you've given us the ability to earn an income to feed shelter and clothe our families we thank you tonight that you've given us the revelation of giving unto your great work and to help finance your work here on this earth Lord tonight as we all participate in this offering Lord as we all give as we have the ability to give tonight God, you certainly gave all to us. Lord, I ask you to bless this offering tonight. Help it and multiply it, God, so that we can reach a world with this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Let's give. Sometimes I wonder, is he faithful? Does he see me in my trouble? Does he understand? Sometimes I question if he's able. Can he rescue? Can he save me again and again? But when I
Yes, he can. Stand with me right now, if you would. Would y'all be much in prayer for this church that God blesses us with some singers? And some musicians. Would you give them a hand? Come on. I think we might be a little spoiled around here. Now the greatest part of any service is when God speaks to us, when God speaks to us through His Word, through His Word. The precious man of God that I'm bringing to preach to you tonight, for some time, for some time, a lot of conversations that I had with him was not face to face. A lot of conversations I had with him was over the phone. I, saw, I told at the wedding Friday night that the first time I heard the name Varnum was in West Monroe, Louisiana at a conference. And I heard someone whistling during praise and worship just as loud as they could. And I was trying to be inconspicuous and I was trying to look over my shoulder and see who in the world is whistling. And when I did, I caught eyes with Brother Varnum's mother. And I mean, she was ever more praising God in a whistle. I mean, she was ever more lifting the praises up. So I met the Varnums there, and that's, been, that's probably been over 35 years or so ago. The Bible says that a good name is to be chosen above riches. And so in my mind, I just had this good name of Varnum. When Varnum was someone to talk about Bellevue, Florida, and the Varnums that were just such a sweet taste would come to my mouth because of knowing where they stand and they're good holiness people, uh, apostolic, apostolic to the core. When, Cam when uh, Cameron, somebody said, Cameron's like a little boy from Florida. I told youth pastor him and I said, now find out who this is. Because I'm getting tired of raising these kids around here and they get married and they go somewhere where they don't hold. Right. 
I said, Brother Hammond, I said, find out who she's like and find out. We can stop this thing. You know, it's easy to pick, it's easy to pluck a weed than a tree. Let's don't let it get too far down the pipe. Oh boy, when they came back, Brother Marshall, and they said, it's a young man out of the Varnum's church. Well, right there. I said, let my soul die in peace. I have seen the Lord. And this is... <laughs> and we met, and um, just great people of the Lord. And we're family when we, we sat together. And to the Sevierville Church, it was Brother Varnum and Sister Varnum that made Brother Sister Carpenter 10 minutes late to service in Sevierville today. <laughs> we just got to talking at Global Grounds, and it just like... It's like we've known each other all of our lives, but really we have in the spirit. When I knew that he was coming to help out in the wedding, I just knew that I had to extend an opportunity, an invitation to please stay over Sunday night and preach at the Maribel campus. And I am so thankful. I am so thankful that he moved some things around and stayed, stayed over. And I know tonight... I want you to sit on the edge of your seat. I want you to sit on the edge of your seat. God is going to talk to us tonight through Brother Varnum. Would you just lift your hands and begin to worship God as Brother Varnum from Bellevue, Florida comes to minister to us tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let that keep flowing out of you for the next few moments. Will you let your voice out just for a little bit? Lord, we love you. We worship you. We praise your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost here. The angels of the Lord are here right now. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God. If you're by a husband or wife, if you're by a friend, will you join with them and let the Holy Ghost flow through you together in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, have your way. Jesus, have your way. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is a great privilege to stand here and uh, to be among God's people. The uh, Maryville Church is known far and wide. And uh, long before y'all got in this wonderful, magnificent building, uh, I watched some of y'all services online. And the choir may be bigger, but it didn't look like it because that choir was spilling off the platform. Y'all were packed in there. And y'all were having a move of God. And, uh, and so it has been seen. And uh, as Brother Carpenter just mentioned, I first got to know him and see him. Now, he's talking about Mama whistling. And Mama does whistle. Um, matter of fact, the first time, Brother Carpenter, this has nothing to do. Y'all sit down because I'll start talking. Help me, Jesus. The first time my, my mom and dad was trying to have a hundred people in the church. They came to mama. She was teaching a class and we had 99 and mama said, Oh no, it ain't going to be that close. And just, that's going to be it. So mama walks outside with her keys. She was going to go find somebody because we were going to break a hundred that day. And uh, so when she walked outside, there were these two boys that were walking down the road with pop bombs. And mama whistled at him. And mama can whistle loud. And them boys turned around and looked. And she said, waved them over there. And those boys didn't know what to do. You know, they just come walking over. And she said, what are you boys doing? They're like, we're just taking our pop bottles down to the store. Said, on a Sunday, you know you should be in church. You put those bottles down right there. And you get in that church. And we had 101 that day. So don't mess with mama's whistle. Not only that, that boy, those boys came in and 
and we had 101 and then life went on. And about, about 10, 15 years later, uh, one night we were having church and this young man walked in the back door, walked up to mom and said, I know you don't remember me. And mom said, I'm sorry, I don't. He said, you remember whistling at two boys? And she, he, yeah, I remember that. She said, well, he said, I went home that day after that service and my mom and dad got a divorce. Said, and we moved somewhere up north and said, when we moved there, I told mama, I want to find a church that I felt what I felt in that little church. He went to an apostolic church, became an apostolic preacher. Come on, somebody. You just got to do something. You just got to reach somehow, some way. So at that West Monroe Young Ministers Conference, Brother Carpenter heard Mama whistle. But I heard Brother Carpenter preach an amazing message off of the back of a Betty Crocker cake box. And I never forgot it. And through the years, as he said, we have had an opportunity to connect. Nolan and his wife came and preached for us in Bellevue a couple of years ago now. And uh, the whole Carpenter family, the Erics, everybody. I'm so thankful for this church and the leadership. Are you thankful for your leadership? Aren't you thankful for godly people? Thank you, Lord Jesus. And last but certainly not least, my amazing, beautiful wife. Oh, I just felt the Holy Ghost in this place. Is here right now. I have four amazing children. And uh, should I? I should, okay. So we're praying. We're in prayer. I was taking care of my, my kids. Um, my wife was redoing their, their restroom. And so we were decorating. And I was putting my kids, you know, their letters on their, all of them on the wall together. And I just stepped back. And I was like, oh, my. So I called Brother Carpenter. And I said, Brother Carpenter, I'm in prayer. I think I might be in the wrong organization. And he said, Brother, you're probably in the Holy Ghost. Tell me what you mean. And I said, I just realized that my kid's name in order, Andrew, Lydia, Joshua, Chloe, ALJC, on my wall. And I'm like, sweet mercy, what can I do about that? <laughs> Woo! Well, let God speak tonight. How about that? Thank you, Lord. I, I am preaching here for the first time, but it's not my first time preaching. And I know what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And one of the things you're supposed to do is preach something comfortable, something you preached before. And, um, and I, I've, I've done my best to do that. But then I started praying. And as one man said, God done changed my tune. So I had a message ready to go. But something happened to me this week. And I cannot just preach a message. I honestly, I don't know exactly. I've never preached this before. I don't even have a title. I just titled it my experience because I didn't know what to title it. So I'm going to be preaching. I dreamed a dream. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us for the next few moments. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you anoint me to preach your word. God, let me speak what you put inside of me and let each and every one of us leave this place different than what we came. Let us leave, God, different, God. Let us leave changed by the power of Almighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the church said amen. As Brother Carpenter, and I, Brother Carpenter and I were talking today, he talked about a dream that kind of helped him make a decision that a brother had. And I took that as a confirmation because I normally don't just preach about dreams, but I'm going to preach about a dream. This past Wednesday night, I dreamed a dream. Now, I don't have lots of dreams. And I know when dreams are crazy and when dreams are from the Lord, there are pizza dreams, you know. As a matter of fact, we were at Chick-fil-A up here on Saturday morning, yesterday morning. And while we sat there, someone behind us 
we heard them saying, bro, I dreamt last night that Peyton Manning came to me and told me how they were going to win that game. <laughs> now that, that just might be a pizza dream. I don't know. He might be a prophet. I have no idea. But I know those kinds of dreams. But I know that the older I get, Brother Carpenter, I, the Bible says old men shall dream dreams. I don't feel like an old man, but God's been speaking to me. We had some dreams. Interesting. You know, we, we, need to, we need to talk about what God is saying and doing. I got up and preached about a dream. That was my first time. This is my second time at my church just a little while back. And after I got done, I was talking because the Lord showed me there were bears that were roaming our people and our kids. And the Holy Ghost came and the Holy Ghost began to do things. And what I did not know is once I said it, people began to come. I'm talking about prayer warriors in the church said, I had that same dream. I had that same dream. God's trying to speak to us. We, we're not just in this thing on our own. We're not just trying to get through this thing. We are laborers together with God. This past Wednesday, I was sleeping in the early morning hours and I went into a business meeting in this dream and it was a beautiful house and there was a lot of deals going on, a lot of, a lot of work that was happening. And people were networking and people were talking and there was meetings going on in different places. And I was there with everyone and we were going just through the process of, of this business meeting and this get together. And I, I walked outside. And when I walked outside, I was just kind of looking up and it was beginning to get about dusk and there were a few clouds around. And all of a sudden I saw something begin to come through these clouds and I kept looking and I realized it was angels and, and when I saw them it, it dawned on me it's happening it's happening and I began to say it's the rapture it's the rapture and I'm telling y'all I I felt my feet come off the floor I can feel the Holy Ghost right now talking about it my feet started slowly coming off the floor and here I went up in the air and I was shouting, this is it, this is it, this is the rapture. And as we begin to go up in the sky, my son don't even know this, I didn't tell him yet. But I looked over and Andrew was right beside me and we were, there ain't no feeling like that in the world. I can't tell you the excitement that came inside of me watching my boy. Here we go. We begin to climb up into the air. We begin to move up into the clouds. I'll never forget it. My, my son, he does what he does all the time. He always gets way ahead of me. And he started going through that cloud before I did it. So I started, I don't know, I was trying to swim in the air. I had my arms out. I was just trying to get up through that cloud. But as soon as I did, I was standing back on the ground in front of that house and I knew that God had sent me back to tell people it's time. And so I started going back in the house and I would find someone and I'd bring them out. And what had happened, you know what? This right here is a good way to explain it. LED wall, all these little lights, the entire sky had filled with angels. They were so thick, they covered the sky as far as you could see. And their bodies were illuminating like an LED wall individually. And they began to make letters and words and Chinese and languages. I don't know what they were and symbols and all these things. So I was bringing people out and I said, you see it? The Lord's calling. We're about to leave this place. And they would look up and every one of them, were, they were amazed. And then they began to explain, oh, that's probably some government thing that they've got going on here. Boy, that's amazing. And they walked back in. 
And I go find someone else and I say, hey, come out here. I got, I got to show you this. And we walked out again and we looked up in the sky and these images and these, these things were all so beautiful all over the sky. It was so obvious something was happening. And they would look and they would reason it away. One person after another just kept coming out and explaining why it was happening and why they needed to go back to their business meeting to have business as usual. I had a dream, but this is not just something I've had in the dream. I've had a feeling in my spirit and I, I don't believe that I am the only one. I believe that there are people in this place today that you have been feeling the pull of eternity. You have been feeling something over the past few weeks, months, maybe even years. Something has gotten into your spirit uh, that the Lord uh, is coming. Uh, you can feel it. It's different uh, than it was a year ago. It's, it's different than it was uh, last decade. Uh, there's something in the atmosphere. It's exciting to think about. Maybe it happened in a service. When the pastor began to preach and something stirred your spirit, something began to stir you and move you. It's time. It's time. I know that it's real. I want you to know another confirmation is what Pastor Carpenter said today. It's real. We got so many people acting like heaven's not real and hell's not real. I'm here to tell you hell is real and heaven is real. There is a hell for you to avoid and there is heaven for you to claim. It's real. It's real. The day is getting closer. What day? First Thessalonians 4 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the cloud in the clouds Andrew we're going to the clouds together buddy we're going to meet him in the air it's coming it's coming I know there are voices all around that want to make you think about something else. Just like in the Bible times. First, second Peter three, three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Oh, pastor Jason, how cute. You think that that's really happened. Don't you know it was just a dream? I do. But I know there was purpose in that dream. Because the word backs that dream up. It's going to happen. But there's going to be scoffers. That as soon as you start talking about it, they start laughing about it. As soon as you bring it up, they're going to be scoffing. Why? Because they're walking after their own lust. The reason we don't think about heaven anymore is because we're walking after our own lust. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. But I'm here to tell you, I don't care what the world says. It's real. It's coming. It's closer now than when you first believed. I don't care what the naysayers say. Don't let them discourage you. It's going to happen. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also 
He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. We can't just talk about heaven anymore. Pie in the sky, preacher. The problem is we get stirred up with a story. Something gets our attention. The preacher preaches and it stirs us. But just like in my dream, we find reasons to explain it. We reason it away and we go back to business as usual. I feel like I've come with a mission from the Lord. I wish I had a better laid out sermon, but I feel like God has sent me here to this church in Maryville to remind you to get your eyes back on heaven again, to get your eyes back on that place again, to get your eyes off of the world and all the junk that's going on. And remember, there is a place. I believe the biggest difference between the first century church and the 21st century church is they thought more about heaven than we do. As a matter of fact, they talked about it so much that they didn't even have to explain it. All they would have to say is that day. They didn't have to lay it all out. They heard Jesus in the Olivet Discord when his disciples asked him, when shall the end come? What shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus began to give them things to look for. Wars and rumors of wars. We're hearing about it every day. The beast is rising up. Nuclear warfare is now once again at the top of the news. Earthquakes in diverse places. The earth is groaning in places like it's never been before. The earth is groaning, preparing to give birth to the prophecies of the word of God. Pestilence, by definition of pestilence, could be called the coronavirus. And there's other things that are coming. Remember, it says this is the beginning of sorrows. Famines. We are hearing more in the news about famines than we've ever heard before. But when Jesus had prophesied all these things to look for, he said this in Matthew 24, 36. But of that day, had hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my father only. That day, that day, the day of all days, the day that we've been looking for, the disciples got a hold of that statement. Second Timothy 1 and 12. For this which cause I also suffer many things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. That day. First, second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18 The Lord grant unto thee the five, five mercy in the Lord in that day. Second Timothy 4, 8, henceforth is laid up a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only, not to me only, but to all them that love his appearance. That day. They just walked up to people and said, that day. That day. They didn't have to say, well, you know, the day that, that, that your feet's going to come off the ground, the, the day that the trumpet's going to sound, and, and the day that the Lord, they didn't have to say any of that because it was on their lips all the time. They just said, hey, uh, I'm looking for that day. And they said, that day? Uh, I can't wait for that day. Uh, that's the day I've been waiting for. Uh, that's the day I'm looking for. It was the day they preached about. It was the day they preached about. It was a day they preached about. It was a day they talked about. It was a day they thought about. It was such a part of the New Testament church. God help me to preach tonight. It was such a part of the New Testament church that my studies 
I realized the early church would greet each other with a word to remind them of that day. Here in America, if you greet someone, you say, hello. My sister has been in Asia, Thailand. When you greet someone there, you say, Swatikab. The Jewish people would say, Shalom. But they said the early Christians, when they greeted each other, they said, Maranatha. They didn't say, hello. They said, Maranatha. Maranatha's two Aramaic words that relate to each other in their meaning. First is the Lord has come. The second is the Lord is coming. The Lord has come. The Lord is coming. Whenever they greeted somebody, it was on their lips because they believed the Lord had come. That's why John 1, 45, Philip findeth Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. They knew when Jesus stepped on the scene, it wasn't just another man, but God himself had robed himself in the flesh. They realized he was the one true and living God. They realized this is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. All things were made by him and for him and without him was not anything made that was made. They believed the Lord had come. But they didn't just believe the Lord had come. They believed the Lord is coming. They believed it because Jesus told them in John 14 and three, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. The Lord has come and the Lord is coming. Acts one and 11, which also said ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing into heaven? The same Jesus, which was taken up from you unto heaven shall so come again in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. I'm here to tell you, uh, Maranatha, the Lord has come. Uh, Maranatha, the Lord uh, is coming uh, again. Uh, I want to remind you uh, what you're living for. Uh, it's not for this world. Uh, it's not for this church. Uh, it's not for this building. Uh, thank God for it. Uh, but I'm going to get out of this place. Uh, I'm going to leave this world behind me. Pastor Jason, that's back in the Bible. They're the ones that had their eyes on heaven. Abraham had his eyes on heaven for he looked for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker was God. The truth of the matter is, is it wasn't all that long ago that the songs we sang in church had more to do with that world than this world. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. That's the songs that we used to sing. It was always about heaven. Oh, we used to sing it. Oh, I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for those gates of pearl. I'm keeping my record white, watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. That was the mind, everything they did. If anybody asked me where I'm going, where I'm going soon, I'm going up yonder. That's where I'm going. That's what I'm going to see. I can't wait till I see him. Oh. My parents, my grandparents got the Holy Ghost in Missouri, 1929. They said the revival 
I'm happy. It's not a concrete floor. I can make some noise. If I damage something, I'll pray for you. <laughs> one preacher broke someone's pulpit, said, I'll buy you another one. Didn't know how many thousands of dollars it would be. So I'll just pray for you. <laughs> they were in such revival in 1929 that the little town they lived in still had dusty streets and didn't have concrete sidewalks. They had boardwalks. And they said that they would be walking across the street or, and see on the other side, the other boardwalk, someone from the church. And they say, whoa, wasn't that a good service? And they say, oh yeah. Are you gonna be there tonight? Oh, I'm gonna be there tonight. And they would say something like, I'll see you there or in the air. And that's all they had to say. Grandpa said they start shouting. He said uh, it sounded uh, like thunder. Uh, that whole city uh, stopped and looked out what's going on. Uh, what happened to them? Uh, they got to thinking about heaven. And when you think about heaven, uh, you can't just sit there any longer. When you start thinking about where you're going, uh, you can't just sit there. Uh, there's something uh, about that place. Oh, somebody, go ahead and praise him. Somebody, just imagine dancing on streets of gold. Woo! You're going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. This world is not my home. I'm going to heaven. Grandma, Grandma, uh, Honda Kosika Drama. When Grandma got saved, she was at home by herself. Read Acts two thirty eight. Said God, if this is real. I want it. And right there in her living room, the Holy Ghost fell. And she began to speak in other tongues. No one taught her, you're supposed to be quiet when you speak in tongues. No one taught her how proper you're supposed to be. Grandma would go, I'm sorry if I woke someone up just then. I, I took my kids to California where she was from. I got the address from my mom and I took a picture. I said, is this the tree? She said, oh yeah, it's still standing. I wish I could talk to that tree because grandma shouted around that tree just about every day. She didn't care if she was at church or in her front yard. All she knew is God had been good to her and she's going to heaven. Hey. My mom, my mama, <laughs> she wasn't always saved. And I wish she learned to whistle at church, but she learned to whistle other places. She told my grandma, now first of all, my mom's the baby of 14 kids. That's a lot of kids, I don't care who you are, that's a lot of kids. So grandma was 50 when she had my mom. So mom just thought church was for old people. But she knew about mama. She knew about her mama, what she would do. And she had told her mother, my grandmother, I want to go to hell with the Beatles. Mama was in and out of juvenile detention centers until God got a hold of her. And I ain't got time to tell that story tonight. But she knew 
when grandma was about to have a Holy Ghost fit, she would be in the bus. Woo! One of her friends, one of mama's friends came to her one day. And she, he was a Mexican boy that he was in California. All mom's closest friends were all Mexicans. But he, she said, said, Naomi, your mother almost killed me last night. She said, what do you mean? She said, I was staying up late watching this horror show. And right before the monster got him, your mama screamed and I thought he got me. But mama would be mad at grandma because they would be in the grocery store. And mama said she would hear her start humming. And mom said, stop it. And mom would, grandma would say, ch, 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 ch. swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me. Wow! Let me tell you, when you get excited about heaven and the fact that Jesus is coming again, you can't just sit any longer. You can't just say, oh, bless him, Jesus. Something gets on the inside of you. Something rises from the depths of your soul. I've got to praise him. I've got to shout. I've got to lift him up. It's real. I had a dream. I had a dream. It's real. I'm halfway done, remain standing. Here's the problem. Is right now, I'm taking you out of the house. And I'm saying, look at that. The question is, are you gonna go, whoa, well, it's probably just, it's just politics. It don't mean nothing. Back to business as usual. Church as usual. Oh, help me to sit back down a second. What's wrong with us? We've come to this place where a man of God is preaching and the music is so beautiful. And if we're not careful, you say, didn't you just see what happened? I did. I saw a few things happening. I'm not your pastor. <laughs> I had a sweet message to preach. But God said, there's too many people Going back to business as usual. After they've seen the signs. I'm sorry, sound man. After they've seen the signs in the heavens. After they've seen God working and moving. Back to usual. How is it that we're coming to ordinary church? How is it that we... Yep, had another good service. What changed? Nothing changed. Same as it was last week. Same as it was last month. Same as I've been doing for years. What's wrong with us? I promise you, you don't have your eye on heaven. If you can't lift your hands every now and then and say, I love you, Jesus. You ain't got your eye on heaven. If you can't say hallelujah every now and then, there's something wrong because this whole thing is not about here. It's about there. I'm going to stop. Remain standing. I'm sorry. Last thing God told me. After all this happened, I started praying. God, I want to hear you say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the 
joys of the Lord. I was praying that with earnesty. And God spoke to me and said, I can't say it to you that day if I can't say it to you today. I just stopped and stopped talking in that prayer and started listening. God began to speak to me. He said, Jason, every day, every night that you lay your head down, you need to ask the question, can God today say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? We've got this fantasy moment somewhere in the distance. But if he can't say it to me today, he can't say it on that day. If he can't look at you today, if he can't look at me today and say, Jason, well done. You didn't pass that soul. Well done. You didn't just go about business as usual. Well done. You didn't see that family go into hell and just go about your merry way. Well done. If he can't say it today, that day, I feel conviction. Lift your hands all over this place. Music. I can't get away from this. I can't get away from this dream. I've been trying to preach other things and God just keeps bringing me back to it. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's happening in this church. I know it's a good church. I know it's a powerful church. I know it's a strong church, but is it a church that's got its mind on heaven? Why don't you invite someone to come with you and fill this altar right now? Ask someone, would you like to go pray? Somebody, get your mind on heaven. Someone needs to repent. You know you're living in sin. You know there's things in your life uh, that are not right. Uh, you know there are things uh, going on in your family uh, that should not be happening. Uh, you know if you lay your head uh, down tonight uh, and God came, uh, he would not be able to say, well done. That's it, you're in the aisle. Come all the way to the front. There's people behind you. Come all the way to the front. There's people behind you. Ministers begin to move in the Holy Ghost. Altar workers begin to move in the Holy Ghost. Someone needs to ask God, give us some more dreams. Speak to me again, God. Speak to me again, God. Speak to my heart, God. Don't let me just merrily go to hell. Don't let me just ignore the signs. Don't just let me ignore and reason away what you're trying to tell the church. Jesus! Keep praying. I can't get over the dream. I can't get over that people were looking at the same thing I was looking at, but was going back into the business meetings. I can't get over it. I can't let you go through this service and you're not saved and you haven't prayed through. You need to pray today. Operate in the Holy Ghost. Operate in the Holy Ghost. Operate in the Holy Ghost. Come on, get your eye on heaven again. Come on, get the spirit of Abraham who looked for a city. There's a flow starting to happen right now. Sir, God loves you. He sent me here to stir you up. He sent me here to preach. He sent me here to wake you up. I know it's just a dream, but God gave it to me and God put it in my spirit to tell you it's time to stop having church as usual. It's time to stop having business as usual. The Lord is about to come. Flow in the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir, obey God. Lift your hands and cry out to God. Cry out to God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord.
let it get back to the old song. It seems like everybody's talking about heaven. It seems like everybody's talking about heaven. Maranatha, the Lord has come. The Lord is coming. Oh, there's a great anointing flowing right now. I wish some elders would lay hands on some of the young people. Come on, elder. Lay hands on that young lady, that young man. Come on, elder, get in here amongst them. We've got a good right here in Maryville. We got a good in Souls Harbor. But this is not heaven. This is not heaven. This is wonderful. Heaven comes down, but it's not heaven. There is a place. Go ahead. Come on, minister, move around here and minister. Come on, altar worker, move in the Holy Ghost right now. Lydia, move and pray. Andrew, move and pray. Come on, that's it. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I want to be ready. Oh, that's it. Come on, ma'am. Nothing's worth missing heaven. Come on, sir. Nothing's worth missing heaven. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Come on, help your brother pray. Help your sister pray. We're going to heaven together. We're going to heaven together. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, we're going to heaven together. We're going to heaven.
Lord, thank the 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 Lord. Oh, hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God. Thank you, Brother Varnum. Thank you, Brother Varnum. Thank you, Brother Varnum. Thank you. Now, all of us need this. All of us need this. But I'm so glad that my grandchildren got to hear about the coming of the Lord. I'm glad that my grandchildren I don't know the year it was Strong Tower. Brother George Akers was preaching on the coming of the Lord. He had a video at the end that started giving stats. The music to the video was a low sub, and you could tell as the video was going, it was building boom, 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 boom. And I knew we were getting close to the climax when all of a sudden I had my eyes closed and I knew the video was going to climax with a group of people worshiping God and then boom, they were gone. And so I closed my eyes and all of a sudden somebody hit me started clawing around the top of my head trying to get into my arms. And when I opened my eyes up, Nolan couldn't have been no more than six or seven years old. He had run all the way down, Gigi, he had run all the way down the aisle, found his daddy, and I mean, he just jumped up in my lap. and He said, Daddy, is that really gonna happen? I said, yes, Nolan, that's really going to happen one day. And you got to be ready for that day, Nolan. Nolan, if you you don't tell the truth, Nolan, you're not going to spend eternity with your mom and daddy in heaven. Now, I know we're living in a culture right now that says, please don't do that to them children. We better do that to them children. We better tell those children. Break that lying habit on them while they're young. Don't let them just go through life. We better let those children know if you don't have your own relationship with God, you're not going to make it on that day when the Lord comes back. Yes, sir, Nolan. You better repent every day, boy. You better ask God to forgive you every day of your life, Nolan. And if you have things in your life, Nolan, that you know that's wrong, you better do everything you can to bypass it, block yourself, to keep yourself from sinning. Because didn't that just, I don't know, did anybody beside me get a revelation tonight? He is not going to say well done to us on that day unless he can say well done to us every day of our lives. You know, there's some things on some iPhones right now And there's some things on some iPads and some computers right now that you need before midnight to go into it and to erase it. And I want you to know you'll hear God say, well done. There's some some music we're listening to that we need to get rid of it. We need to trash it. We need to get rid of it. And we need to hear him say, well done. There's some inter, there's some entertainment. You know, do you know what do you know what the first five letters of the word entertainment is? Enter. You better be careful what you're entering. And God would sure be saying, "Well done," if you get rid of that. Well done. I don't listen to that anymore, God. Well done. I don't visit those sites anymore, God. I went to church today. I sang in the choir. 
I taught Sunday school. I usher. Well done. Brother Varnum, Brother Varnum, Brother Varnum. I had a dream. Thank you. Thank you tonight. I need it, but I sure was glad to see my grandbabies to tears tonight. Because if we don't watch it, there'll be a generation grow up. Well done. Where there's some young men getting baptized tonight, you know what the Lord's going to say to them? Let's direct our attention. Alan Williams, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to God's holy word, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of all of your sins. Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost yes. in, in the name Jesus of Jesus. Name. Jesus name. Yes. That's it, Alan. Just raise your hands and give God yes. praise. Hallelujah. Well done, son. Well done. Well done. Well done. Justin Gregory, upon the profession of your faith and in obedience to God's holy Mighty. word, Mighty. I now baptize you Mighty. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins, and you Greater shall power. receive the gift of the Holy Ghost power. in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, greater power.
knows the hope that keeps us moving on through trouble days. For anyone who knows they've got a future and a hope beyond the grave. Every life's a different story. How we let us out of darkness into love. of the Holy Ghost. Lord, give them a greater power than the power that is within them right now. Lord, we give you praise and give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brooke, upon a profession of your faith and obedience to the word of the Lord, yes. I do now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sins. And thank the Lord you've already received the gift, the gift of, the of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost in, in Jesus' the name. name. Of Jesus. Christ. Lord, I pray tonight, God, that you would fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, as you're washing them, God, from their sin. Lord, as you're remitting their sin. God, as they're wearing your precious name. Lord, touch them tonight, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. All right, Amy. Hallelujah. Amy, upon the fresh of your faith and obedience to the word of the Lord, I do now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sins. Yes. And thank the Lord you just received the gift of the Holy Ghost yes. in Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Sister Carpenter, would you help me out tonight? Is that mom and three daughters being baptized tonight? Is that mom and three daughters being baptized tonight? And, and I want the church family to know this is on the Carpenter side. This is our family, the Carpenter family. I, I, I do thank God. Yes, yes. Alyssa, from professing your faith and obedience to the word of the Lord, I do now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sins, yes. and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost yes. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I do now indeed baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sins. Yes. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy you Ghost. You shall receive the Jesus gift name. of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. God baptize her right now, Jesus. mother coming up out of that baptismal pool deserves a thunderous applause right now. I want you to know that this mother that just got baptized before her daughters did, this mother's currently in a Bible study right now. Uh, she, she's a, a nurse at UT Hospital Sister Carpenter's been giving her a Bible study. And the one thing, Brother Purdue, that sticks out in that woman, she does not want to raise her family in this godless generation that we got right now. She understands the world is not the place. I think, oh, precious God, if all mothers in this world could see this right now tonight, all the mothers in this world could see this tonight. Well... I just love the Lord tonight. My cup runs over. What a message, Brother Barnum. Thank you so, thank you so very, 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 very much. Thank you. Let's just be dismissed in the name of the Lord. Father, my cup runs over tonight. God, my, my cup, Lord, I want to hear you say, well done. God, if there's anything in my life, God, that I'm doing, God, that I shouldn't be doing, God, if you'll bring it to my memory, God, if you'll bring it to my mind, God. Lord, I want to make heaven my home. God, I want to make heaven my home. 
Lord, I want to walk on streets of gold. I want to make heaven my home. Lord, I give you praise and honor. Thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for the word tonight. God, I give you praise in Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. See you Wednesday night at 7.30 Bible study. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.